is up you guys my name is Selena and today's gonna be a new tutorial showing you guys how to do this camera zoom transition and we're gonna be doing this in Premiere Pro if you guys are interested then keep watching okay so for this effect you're gonna need two cameras so I had a GoPro in my mouth so I could uh, do a point of view shot and then I brought my camera up and so you're gonna need to have your camera fully in the shot yeah that's kind of the basic things you need for this effect and yeah why don't we begin in Premiere Pro Okay, so let's get started with this tutorial. I'm in Premiere Pro right now, and my first two clips are my GoPro clips, where I, like I said, I have the camera moving up inside of the frame, and then my next clip is a drone clip, and it's moving forward. And I like that it's moving forward because we're having a zoom transition, and so it'll flow better when my next clip is also moving forward. So I'm gonna add a speed ramp in the end, so it'll look pretty clean. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is bring that drone clip to the second video line and then bring that over the GoPro clip. And so next thing we're going to do is just adjust the scale position and rotation to scale it down so it fits the camera frame. So you're going to want to go to the middle of the GoPro clip so you can see where the camera is in the frame. Uh, so yeah, you're going to want to adjust the position, scale, and rotation. And I also like to adjust the opacity better so it looks like it's attached to the screen. So I'm going to bring that opacity down to like 11 or even 9. Okay, now I'm going to go to the pen tool and we're going to make a mask. So I'm just going to put a dot on all four sides of that clip. And then I'm going to add some feathering. And we're only making a mask to add the feathering. Because feathering makes it look a little bit more like it's attached to the camera. And you don't want to do too much or it, else it doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to about 33. Okay, now this is the long and tiring part. You're gonna wanna make keyframes. So I'm gonna press the keyframe button for position, scale, and rotation. And then you're gonna wanna make keyframes so that the clip stays on top of the same place on the cameras. So this might take a while, but first of all, I'm just gonna spread out the keyframes a little bit so that it'll be a lot easier to go back in and then add the little small detail adju adjustments. So yeah, I'm going all the way through. The ending doesn't matter so much because we're doing a zoom transition in that part and you won't really be able to see what's going on anyways. And you also don't really want to adjust the scale and rotation too much or else it looks a little bit too funky. Okay, once you think it looks pretty solid, pretty good, we're gonna go to the end of my GoPro clip because I think the ending, I moved the camera forward to the GoPro a little bit and I don't want that. So I'm gonna press C for cut and cut the drone clip and the GoPro clip at the same place and I'm gonna delete the excess GoPro clip and then with this drone clip, I'm going to reset all of the settings. I should have done this in the beginning. But I'm gonna reset all of the position scale rotation settings and make it back to the normal opacity. Uh, I need to make the scale back to 50 actually because my drone clip was filmed in 4K. Okay, once you've reset all the settings of the drone clip, we're gonna go back to our first two clips and we're gonna have to nest these two clips together. So I'm gonna right click and press nest and just press okay to nest the sequence. And then I'm gonna go to effects and search up transform. And then I'm gonna put that transform effect onto our nested sequence. Now we can add the zoom transition. So you're gonna wanna go a little bit towards the end of the nested sequence and then press the keyframe button for scale and also position and then go to the end of that clip and then zoom that scale in as much as you can and also adjust the position so that it go, goes toward the screen. Now the most you can adjust the scale is 300 so we're gonna go back to our motion and then we're gonna add a keyframe for scale up there so it just goes all the way into the screen. And I'm gonna start that scale free keyframe in the middle of our transform keyframes. You also might wanna add position keyframes Okay, now that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we want to just make those keyframes a little bit faster, so I'm going to bring the keyframes closer together. Now we want to add that zoom uh, distortion effect on our, our clip, so we're going to go and uncheck the use composition shutter angle, and we're going to bring the shutter angle all the way up. And you can bring the shutter angle lower to have a smaller distortion effect, but I like it to be as high as it can. Okay, now you have that zoom effect. I'm actually going to double click on my nested sequence and go to my drone clip and bring the opacity a little bit higher because I like to be able to see the next clip a little bit better so it's a cooler transition. And that looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to bring the nested sequence to my second video line and then extend the drone clip a little bit so that 
uh, the nested sequence overlaps the drone clip. And then I'm going to go back to my nested sequence and then go to the keyframe for opacity. And we're going to do that right where that drone clip meets the nested sequence. And then we're going to go to the end of the opacity and bring it to zero. So it just sort of blends in a little bit better. Okay, last but not least, like I said in the beginning, I like that this drone clip is going forward. So I'm going to speed ramp this so it like really pushes, you know, has that really nice zoom. So I'm going to right click on the DJI clip and then I'm going to go to show key clip keyframes, go to time remapping and press speed and make a keyframe right over here for the speed. And then I'm going to drag the line right before my keyframe so we can adjust the speed. And if you guys want to know a little bit more about speed ramping, I'll link a tutorial to speed ramping in the description. And so now it just zooms forward and that looks really clean. So yeah, that's the whole tutorial. Uh, if you guys did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any more tutorial requests or ideas, leave them in the description. Uh, I'm going to try to be uploading three times a week. So subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.